Hi, my name is Brian Baldoff, and I'm the Director of Percussion Studies here at the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. I'm going to be performing the WSMA Honors Audition piece for snare drum, and then offering some tips for you at the end of the video. So I'm going to first perform the piece. You can hopefully use this as a reference while you're learning or maybe polishing up the etude for the audition. And at the end, I'll offer you some tips to keep polishing and, and learning the etude if you're in that initial stage. Also, we have some additional learning opportunities. If you'd like to connect with me, um, there'll be information on how to do that uh, at the end of the video. So, hope you enjoy. Okay, so here's some practice and performance tips for the snare drum etude. If you've started working through this already, you probably realize that it's in 5-8 meter, which can already pose a, a bit of a challenge in terms of counting, um, as well as playing with a metronome. Um, so there's lots of you know, opportunities for us to dig into some tips there to work with that. Um, I would say one of the biggest challenges in this piece um, one are the rolls, right, that, that come up really quickly um, and move by very rapidly, um, as well as the dynamic changes that happen and just keeping the rhythm uh, all in time um, in that meter. Because it does move by pretty quick, um, the piece itself, especially when we get down to, where is it, measure 25, and we have some of those uh, 32nd note figures, we get to some of the sextuplet figures later, so it does move by pretty quickly. So speed is a challenge in this etude, um, the roles and dynamics. Um, so let's deal with some different things uh, related to uh, feeling the, the meter itself, playing some of the rhythmic um, material, um, and give you some ways to practice that. So um, when I'm practicing snare drum, uh, I do like to, well one, I like to you know, wear earplugs if I'm indoors, um, you know, in a small practice room or something, you know, working one snare drum, it's definitely pretty loud. Um, but I also like to turn the snares off um, practice pad work is also really terrific. So, you know, if you can, if you don't have access to a drum all the time, practicing on a pad really, you know, you can work through the rhythms, um, you can work through dynamics, you can work with a metronome, right, and do a lot of good work on a practice pad. Um, but in the end, playing it on a drum definitely feels different, so I try to spend as much time on the drum as I can. Um, so with that said, too, I like to play with the snares off, because, uh, well, for two reasons. One, it's less abrasive on the ears, right, than with the snares on, and two, which is really the main reason, is that it allows me to really hear differences between my right and left hands. I think it's even more uh, exposed if I have the snares off. So I do a lot of practicing, whether it's stick control or you know, other types of exercises or rhythmic stuff, um, etudes with the snares off, because it really helps me to listen. So that's, I guess, tip number one, is to practice with your snares off and wear earplugs um, when you can. So uh, if we take a look at a um, couple of things in this etude, um, if we start at the beginning, um, Vic Firth even notes in his instructions here that he says that he's clearly marked right groups of, in 5-8, we can have groups of 2 plus 3 or groups of 3 plus 2. Um, and you can see here how he's you know, done that at the very beginning. There's 2-8 notes and 3-8 notes and 2-8 notes and then 3-8 notes. Um, and so emphasizing that is kind of nice. Now there's no accents written, so instead of you know really playing it as, and you, I'm not going to try to accent those those flams. Um, I want to make sure that the eighth notes are even, but I still might want to hear that da 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 one two one two three one two one two three. I still might want to hear that kind of you know present in my playing. Um, so I always like to play this with a metronome. So I have eighth notes going here with no accents, so I can you know play at the one sixteen tempo. Um, here we go. So here's the first two bars. If I play it straight, so you hear 
it's very da 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 da, very even, um, which sounds fine, and it's what the music says. But what if we emphasize the groupings just a bit? So you can kind of hear da 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 da, 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 da kind of leads to the three. So it kind of gives me a little bit of a bump on that three, and I think that gives it a little bit more, I don't know, it's more musical, even though I'm not, you know, I'm not punching the accent really hard, um, so I can get away with that. So just something to consider, Would, do you want to emphasize those groups of two and three that, that flow throughout this entire etude? So that's something to think about as we kind of work into the, the polishing stages, especially getting ready for performance. Um, so then if we're really in the learning stage and we have a lot to, to consider, a lot to think about here, stickings become an issue, right? So this relates a little bit to the tempo that we're gonna take it because certain stickings work better slow than they do fast, um, as you probably figured out. Uh, so the tempo, so we wanna stay nice and slow and really process all of the stickings that we've chosen. I wanna write those stickings into my music so that I don't forget. Um, and then practicing those dynamic changes because that always becomes uh, an issue. I think if students get called out the, on, on one thing more than anything else, it's dynamics, right? In auditions, in performances, in those types of sort of um, juried or graded or evaluated performances. So I'm going to slow this way down, actually. And I'm going to start it at 70 instead of 116. So this could be a good practice tempo. This might be you know, a little slow, obviously. I'm using 16th roll basses for all the rolls, so this is gonna sound a little choppy. Um, but I wanna look at measure 13, and I'm gonna start measure 13 and do that subito piano change right there on measure 15. And I'm gonna play two measures at 13, and then play the figure at measure 15. Um, so here we go. change to a different roll bass because that does sound very choppy um, well because I want to keep practicing with the same sticking that I'm going to use the same exact rhythmic bass that I'm going to use when I take it faster so that I'm training my hands to do so even though it does sound very choppy what I'm really focused on here is not so much the roll bass but that transition between the loud forte uh, moment that I have at 13 and then that piano subito where I'm going to move out to the edge so for dynamics I can explain uh, you know, exploit parts of the drum and say, I might play in the center or toward the center for louder playing, and I'm gonna play in the edge for a softer playing, which means I have to practice that transition, right? So if you can see my sticks move here, I'm gonna do it one more time, and I'm gonna practice moving toward the piano so that I can play it out here, out here toward the edge. see that I'm moving there right after that last eighth note that I play on measure 14. So I'm going to really practice that back and forth several times um, until it feels comfortable and feels natural to move out there and play soft. Um, and that's going to help with that dynamic difference, that dynamic transition. When we look at the crescendo that comes up at measure 23, I'm going to practice moving back toward the center so that I can get to that fortissimo at measure 25 and I can be in the center for that. Um, for that moment. Uh, so speaking of measure 23, this is a good time to talk about the rhythmic part of this. Um, one of the exercises I might play, I love to make exercises out of the music that I'm playing because I think that helps me learn it more accurately. So again, if I have this metronome on, I'm still at 70, so it is still slow. Um, I'm thinking about triplets to 16th notes. This is a rhythm that um, gets distorted often. And this is one of those spots to really zone in on and practice so that you can play very accurately. So I'm just going to play it even for now, just to get the feel of da 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 just that back and forth. Okay, and then I'll accent where the eighth, uh, the sixteenth note goes. triplet, which is usually the tendency to do uh, with this kind of a rhythm. So I'm going to practice exercises just dealing with that without the accent, 
with the accent, with various dynamics, crescendos, I might even decrescendo it, just to really gain control and then gradually start speeding that up. Um, so rhythmically speaking, that triplet to 16th note happens pretty often, uh, or triplets to 8th notes, if we're in 8th note triplets. So you can see in measure 37, there's 8th note triplets to 8th notes, and then six tuplets to 16th notes. So that really 3 to 4, that 3 to 2, that idea back and forth of triple to duple in this, um, we really need to practice that rhythmically uh, before we put it into context in the piece. Um, so eventually I would gradually speed this up, you know, back to the, to the performance tempo, um, practicing snares off, sometimes snares back on, sometimes snares off, always recording myself during my practice so that I can go back and listen to what I sound like. So again, I hope that these uh, practice tips were useful for you. Um, if you want to connect with me with some other learning experiences, uh, feel free to reach out. Some of the things that we offer uh, are some lessons, uh, whether that's in person, if you can get to Stevens Point, or virtually, if you'd like to play some of this for me uh, through a Zoom lesson, I'd be happy to listen to that and give you feedback. We also have a clinic coming up um, that we're offering uh, across the department for all instruments on this specific music. It's supposed to be on November the 6th from 10 to noon, so 10 a.m. to noon. All right, so I hope these practice tips were useful, and happy practicing.